Hi, the Mud Broker here. This past weekend, November 12th and 13th, the local Hmong community celebrated their traditional New Year. The Hmong are people who come primarily from the mountainous jungle regions of Laos. During the Vietnam War, they were heavily recruited by the CIA to fight on the American side. After the United States withdrew from Southeast Asia, the communist path at Lao took over the government of Laos and immediately began persecuting the Hmong for having supported the U.S. Many of them were driven into refugee camps in Thailand, and from there they began to immigrate to the United States. At first, they settled primarily on the West Coast, and of all places, in Wisconsin. I've always thought it must have been terribly strange for a culture to find itself suddenly uprooted from their home in Southeast Asia and transplanted into the cold north woods of Wisconsin. Ah, but then the world's a funny old place, isn't it? The Hmong New Year's celebration consists of wearing traditional garb, feasting, singing, dancing, all in order to give thanks for the passing of the old year and to celebrate the opportunities that a new beginning brings. I bring this up because Tuesday, November 15th, marks an opportunity for a new beginning for all Wisconsinites. November 15th is the first day that petitions to force a recall of Governor Scott Walker, a wholly owned subsidiary of Coke Industries, can begin to circulate. I can't stress enough how important it is to remove him from office. The earlier recall elections targeting Republican state senators were only partially successful. While some of them were indeed removed from office, enough of them came from staunchly conservative districts that they managed to keep their seats and maintain the Republican majority in both houses of the Wisconsin legislature. However, the state Senate recall campaigns were by necessity a piecemeal affair. Only a few of the districts were eligible for recall, but that isn't the case with Scott Walker a wholly owned subsidiary of Coke Industries, because the entire state can vote on his recall. In order to effect a recall of the governor, we must collect 540,000 signatures over the next 60 days. With Walker, a wholly owned subsidiary of Coke Industries, out of office and a new governor in place, it would place a check on the Republican majority because while they have enough votes to pass whatever legislation they want, they don't have enough votes to override a gubernatorial veto. On a side note, even though I have never been a Republican, it's getting to the point where I'm loath to even call these people Republicans. Would Abraham Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, and Dwight Eisenhower even recognize the utterly corrupt and morally bankrupt monstrosity that their once grand old party has become? It was here in Wisconsin that the hammer blow of this neoconservative movement first fell. Hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets of Madison to protest Walker's policies when he tried, and succeeded, to gut workers' rights and destroyed programs on which the poor rely. It's also here in Wisconsin that people began to wake up we began to realize that the freedom of speech and the freedom of assembly gave us power. I believe that this was a direct precursor to the Occupy movements which has swept the United States and the rest of the world. But power is useless unless it is put into action. And this is the first opportunity that the Occupy movement has to put that power into action. By removing Scott Walker, a wholly owned subsidiary of Coke Industries, from office, it demonstrates to the politicians of the United States that they are not accountable to the 1%. They are accountable to the 99%. You see, the Republican Party was founded in a small town called Ripon here in Wisconsin. Therefore, it's only fitting that we should take the first steps here in Wisconsin to end the abomination which the Republican Party has become. So if you live in Wisconsin, sign the petition. Get others to sign it. We cannot allow this recall effort to fail. This is the turning point of the Occupy movement. If we fail, the movement dies. If we succeed, it sends a clear and unequivocal message to those in power 
that the 99% will take back our nation from those who have tried to steal it from us.